Father, but this morning would love you to come and join us. Stand with Israel right now this morning as we pray for good, for good freedom, for freedom, for faith, and hope, for peace, for the new nations, for the hearts of the Lord. stood up and you've come out today and we're here today my name is Hector Robertson on behalf of the Freedom and Rights Coalition thank you for coming out to stand today I'm a proud New Zealander we live in the greatest nation in the world that's why we are standing here today I'm proud to have grown up in this nation a Christian nation a nation that has been underpinned by our Judeo-Christian faith and under that faith that Christian faith I and millions and millions of other New Zealanders have been able to live in a free society. We've been able to prosper. We've been able to be safe. And we've been able to go about our lives loving and respecting one another. It's that faith that is why I'm standing here today. Our anthem, God of nations, at thy feet. In the bonds of love we meet. Hear our voices, we entreat. God defend New Zealand. The God that we're standing for today is the God of Israel. He's a God who loves Israel, has chosen a nation, a holy nation, a nation right throughout the world. And we, land, we stand here in solidarity with Israel. We stand here to send our love and say as a nation, we stand strong in our love for this nation and the God of this nation, who's the God of our nation, New Zealand. All New Zealanders today need to stand and I just want to acknowledge you all for being the brave hearts who are leading the way and igniting the hearts of every single New Zealander who should be standing with us today. We're here to make a sound. When I say we stand, you say we stand. We stand. We stand. We stand. We stand. Give yourselves a hand. 
we will not stand silent. We're honored today to have a couple of speakers who are standing with us today and have got some things to say, to speak out to the nation and to the world. So first of all, I'd like to invite a man who's been a good leader, a great leader in this city with many people and he stands with us today with conviction and solidarity and with a heart to stand and make a noise to support our brothers and sisters on the other side of the world because his own ministry has he been impacted by the same God that these people serve. Would you join with me in putting your hands together for Pastor Peter Mordlock. Hey, thank you so much for coming and I do want to thank Bishop Brian and Hannah for putting this together today. I want you to give them a big hand right now. I think every pastor in New Zealand should be here right now. Why is that? Because salvation is of the Jews. They were held the oracles of God. You and I would not be here today as a Christian if it wasn't for God's chosen people. And so we know the book, we know how it all works out. And I mentioned at the beginning of the year that this is gonna be the year of the unusual and the unexpected. And we see today that atrocity that happened over the weekend and every New Zealander should be horrified and mortified by what went on over there. And so today we stand in support of Israel. We stand in support of that great nation. I've been to Israel a number of times and there's certainly something special about that nation. So I wanna ask you three questions before I pray for Israel. I wanna ask you when you were born, where you were born, and why were you born? When were you born? Where you were born, why you were born, when you were born, where were you born, and why were you born. My friend, when you were born, you were called to serve the generation that you grew up with. You young people are called for this day, this hour, this is your time, and so I want to encourage you, we're called to serve the generation of our time. Where were you born? We are born, I'm a Kiwi boy, I was born in Taranaki. You know, we're called to serve our community. We're called to serve our community, this great nation of New Zealand, which was once called God's own, once called a Christian nation. And we saw what Helen Clark did, and I was happy and so proud to stand with Bishop up there in Waitangi, and as he confronted her in relation to turning our nation into a secular nation. How diabolical is that? And we've seen the fruit of it on the front page of our newspaper continually every day. We need to return to our Christian roots. And I'm standing at this government for righteousness. And we need righteous people down on Wellington. Can I hear an amen to that? So where were you born? You're called to serve your generation. Why were you born? Well, can I say, first of all, uh, where were you born? You're, served to, you're called to serve your community. And why were you born? You were called to serve the Lord. And I stand here today, bold and unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It changed my life and I know it changed many of yours. And so I want to encourage you today, be bold and unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God to salvation to all who believe. And so we stand with Israel today because that's where our roots come from. They were God's chosen people. And I tell you, God's still got a plan for Israel. You keep your eyes on what's happening in the Middle East today because I tell you, this could be the beginning of the end. And so I want to pray for Israel right now before Bishop Brian comes. And uh, I want to pray with you and believe God for our nation. We live in the most utter part of the earth. I don't know if you know that. The furthest part from Jerusalem. And Jeremiah said, when the nations are in an uproar, a whirlwind will come out of the uttermost part of the earth. I'm believing that out of Aotearoa, out of New Zealand, a move of God would come because the gospel will be preached to the uttermost part of the earth and it shall not return void, but it will accomplish that what it was sent for, amen? And we need to see the hearts of men. You know, politics, as we know, isn't the answer. The answer is a changed heart. That's what happened to me, my friend, and I know it happened to many of you. A changed heart through the power of Jesus Christ, amen? And so we stand here today bold and unashamed of the name that is above every other name let's be honest he came he was a jewish man he came and walked the dusty streets of jerusalem but he died and rose again for you and i and paid the sin for every person in mankind so we loved all mankind right we're not against people today but i'm against the devil it's a devil that comes to rob kill and destroy and so we stand here today with the people of god and believe for our nation so let's pray father we thank you we thank you for New Zealand. We thank you for the people that have come today. But we reach out across the world right now. Lord, the uttermost part of the earth, we pray for 
Israel. We pray for those people. We pray, Father oh God, that you would encourage them, give them strength, give them wisdom. We pray for the president and the politicians here. We pray, oh God, that you would guide them in this hour. Lord, we pray for those that are hostages, Lord, trapped there in Gaza. We pray for them. Lord, we believe that you'd strengthen them and help them, Father. Lord, we pray for the Jewish people that they would come to know the Messiah, come to know the one that came to give us life for them. And Lord, we pray for innocent people in Gaza too. We pray, oh God, for mums and dads and kids, Lord. Father, we rebuke the devil, the one that comes to try to rob, kill and destroy the evil that we saw. Lord, the evil that we saw over the weekend, oh God, we pray against the devil. We pray the blood of Christ, that Jesus would be glorified. And oh God, we ask you to sweep by the power of your spirit, because you are the only hope of the world, and we know you're coming again. We know, oh God, that Lord, you would bring peace in Jesus' name, because you are the Prince of Peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Man does not have the answer to the Middle East problems. Lord, we know, we know also, listen, my friend, the Bible says a man will arise offering peace. <laughs> yeah, he will. The Antichrist will offer peace. But there'll be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes back. I'm talking about Jesus. Come on, would you give the Lord a big hand today? Give a shout of praise. Come on. Thank you, Pastor Mordlock. Great to be here today. Well, uh, our next speaker today is a man who has been standing for righteousness in this nation for over 40 years. He's a man who has stood at times when no one else would stand. He's a man who would not bow down to anything but to the God that he serves, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for everything that is good about this nation. So without any further ado, would you please join with me in welcoming Apostle Brian Tamaki. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out today. It's, um, it's a beautiful time to be here in Auckland and standing for the nation, Israel. The nation that God loves, the nation that a Jew was born into this world that was to be the saviour of the planet. It's Jesus Christ. And so I proudly stand here today to say that I and many in this country of New Zealand are standing for Israel. At the same time, we condemn the terrorist acts that have been committed by Hamas, Hezbollah, and any other terrorism that's come from the Arab world against Israel that have murdered innocent civilians, women, children, and decapitating the heads of 40 babies off their bodies and also putting that up online, these executions are broadcast across the world for everyone to see. This is no longer, that's not war. Killing babies and chopping their heads off is not war. And also war. putting that up across the world, this is genocide. This is, no longer, this is genocide. They want to wipe the earth of Israel itself and every Jew. This, my friends, is World War Three. The Holocaust too is already happening when you see this type of barbaric violence committed to a nation that was unaware and they take civilians out like that. This is all over the news, it's not new, but I think it's something that the country of New Zealand, who I think is asleep, the media in New Zealand is disgusting, I think the media of New Zealand is the real terrorist in the Southern Hemisphere. They, they block news, they have a narrative that is only theirs, and it's one that's destroyed our country. It's disgusting that we have the Eiffel Tower, we have London, the Big Ben, we have New York, we have many other nations around the world displaying the blue and white and the flags of Israel Yet New Zealand has got nothing. No Israeli flag flying from our parliament off the bridge. The uh, sky tower has a lot of colours up there, but I have not seen blue or white displayed at all. What the hell's wrong with my country? What the hell's wrong when politicians in this country cannot come out straight from their mouths, not only to denounce what any human can do, of the barbaric violence, but they've stuttered, they've been slow in condemning the violence of Hamas 
of Israeli civilians on women displayed as they mutilated their bodies and those babies I talked about, hardly any reference from any of these politicians about this. In fact, they're hesitant to even say that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Chris Hipkins was asked the question, today, should the Hamas organization be identified as a terrorist organization? He acted like he did when he was asked, what is a woman? You can easily, anybody could see that Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yet our outgoing, praise God, Prime Minister Hipkins could not even say out of his mouth to denounce the atrocities that Hamas has done and could not call them a terrorist organization. So he said, I have to confide to see what advice the other politicians can give me. Now that's Luxton, that's Peters, and that's Seymour, and the rest of the Māori. Most of them couldn't give a straight answer to say, this is a, an abhorrent, this is an absolute atrocity, this is, is not acceptable. They couldn't say that. Instead, some of the politicians came back and the leader of a political party in Parliament said, I want to actually identify Israel as a terrorist organisation. Well, I, you're pretty cold and stiff looking. I mean, I know it's cold today, but I am shocked that our parliament in this country is filled with anti-Semitism. The anti-Jews, we got, we got a parliament that's strongly uh, is anti-Semitism. They're full of anti-Jewish people. I am disgraced, I'm disgusted in my country that there has been no actual voice of condemnation to the violence of babies and children and innocent civilians. I am disgusted that they instead want to call out Israel as a terrorist organization. That's New Zealand politicians. I think we should get all those ones that are sympathizers with the Hamas and Hezbollah with their violence. We should get them all together in parliament that believe in the cause of Hamas and we should deport them to Gaza and they should be kept there and not allowed to leave until it's all over. I, it's a disgrace today that they're too busy thinking of tomorrow and the next lot of what we've got to put up for the next three years of a lame duck, very soft parliament that can't even stand up to the atrocities that are causing this world. Now I want to say something else today is Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th is usually linked to bad luck and all sorts of other types of superstition. But only a day or two ago, in the last two days, the Hamas former leader came out on and broadcasted across the world and called for a day of holy war jihad across the world. He put it out, a war cry, that every person that believes in the cause of the Hamas and the Palestinians that want Israel totally eliminated and taken off this earth and exterminated should do these things on Friday the 13th. So he called the Arab world and all Islam and Muslims who believe in the cause of the Quran and he, he stated the tenets of Quran and some of them that our religious tenets are the most important to us than anything else. So he's called a holy war on the Friday the 13th. We're the first country in the world to be sitting on Friday the 13th. It's quite remarkable to me that we're standing here in the biggest city of our country letting the world, rest of the world know who have yet to come into their Friday. Friday is still rolling on around the world. So we're sending a clear message against the jihad of the Muslim and the Arab world that would join in with Hamas to actually destroy the Jewish state and invade Israel. We send back now a declaration from the brotherhood of the firstborns of Christ.
And we say now, we're pushing back and saying, we're coming against your jihads, we're coming against your orders of violence, for we are a movement of peace. And we do pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for the peace of every innocent Arab, including the Palestinians and the Jordanians. We pray for those of all the world that we are not and do not engage in violence and war. But as it was said by my friend earlier, it's an impossible ask that peace comes by a diplomat, United Nations, or some man or other type of political figures around the world. They can't bring the ultimate peace that we are all looking for in this globe, this earth. The peace that we are all looking for in the human family is the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace himself. That's Jesus Christ. And until Christ comes back, or Christ and his people bring the peace of the gospel of the kingdom, then we'll see these wars continue to happen. It hasn't got better in the Middle East. They've had plenty of signings and agreements between the Arabs and for some of the ones in Egypt who signed recently with Israel and so was uh, the United Arab Emirates were going to sign with them and stalled. So there have been signings and many agreements over the years, decades. But it hasn't got better. It's got worse. And this is the worst outbreak of violence in almost the history of Israel. So we may be on the brink of something very big that will affect us right down here in the little old New Zealand. And my warning is to this country, on the brink of our elections, and my warning to the politicians and every Kiwi family, that you could not stay still, stay silent, when you see graphically broadcast on social media the execution of innocent people and babies being decapitated, that you carry on your life and just say, oh well, that's them. I'm not a religious person, which is Kiwi's favorite line. This is a nice country to live in. Keep your, keep your Jesus Christ out, Brian. Well, I got something to tell you, you clown. We've had enough of my country being ransacked and hijacked by the wokey liberal left, by the transgender movement, and by everybody else that's anti-Christ and anti-Christian. I'm giving you a warning, we're taking our nation back. And it's time to make New Zealand Christian again. So the warning is going out. We are not taking any more of your inactivity, your, your chasing of money, and what's, what you do is separate yourself from the issues. I hope and pray that the polls tomorrow, there might be a ballot box revolution. But it's got to be a miracle, because I hardly put my faith in the public of this country who would vote for the Greens, 15% of this nation vote for the Greens, who are actually pushing and supporting Hamas and the Palestinian cause to take and wipe Israel off the, off the globe. How could you have a, a party in Parliament and let that happen? And then there are Labour MPs who agree with them. And when they asked Luxton Peters and Seymour for a response, they were like a limp. Well, just look at Luxton's head. I, I'll get in trouble now. You can tell I've had enough. I've had enough of this. And I think today, as we stand for Israel, um, I pray that somehow something will break in our country to get us back on track again, to give our country back again, and get Christ back again in our nation. That's what we need. And so I say, God bless Israel. God bless the God of Israel. God bless the Israel of God. And I'll leave you with this final scripture in Romans, as Paul said. He said there, in chapter 10, verse 1, my greatest heart's desire and my prayer to God is that Israel might be saved. He was talking about Israel receiving their own Messiah, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Israel, that this would be the beginning of your salvation 
and seeing your fellow brother, your Messiah, Jesus Christ, accepted in the religion of our brothers and sisters over there in Israel. So God bless you. Thank you so very much. Have a happy day. Thank you, Apostle Brian Tamaki. Why don't you put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. How heartening and encouraging for us in New Zealand to know that when bullies and evil people issue threats and uh, strike fear across the world, what you have done, what everyone here